Hello and welcome to another video on Progressive Coder. Today we are going to talk about the active record and data mapper patterns in TypeORM. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing and don't forget to press the bell icon. Without wasting any more time, let's dive into the topic. Object relational mappers, also known as ORMs, are a fundamental component of modern application design. An ORM is basically a layer of sorts between the application and data. While it is certainly possible to develop applications without an ORM, using one can seriously improve the architecture of your application. A good ORM can increase the efficiency of your developers and reduce application maintenance. Due to their overall benefits, ORMs have become absolutely necessary when it comes to working with data in an application. But just using an ORM may not be enough. It is equally important to understand how the ORM works. Typically, ORM implementation is divided into two major patterns, Active Record and Data Mapper. While both patterns solve the problem of connecting applications with data, they both follow different philosophies. Basically, both patterns have their own advantages and disadvantages. Type ORM, one of the most popular ORMs for JavaScript and TypeScript, supports both the patterns. But which one should you choose? Let's look at both and then decide. In the active record pattern, we define all the query methods for accessing the data within the model class itself. In other words, all operations such as create, read, update, and delete are performed directly using the model methods. To implement active record pattern in type ORM, we need to use the base entity class. This class is provided by the type ORM package. Basically, the entity class we are defining, in this case flight, should extend the base entity class. The base entity class has all the methods for carrying out the CRUD operations. For example, we create an instance of the flight class, we assign values to the fields, and finally, we call the save method to store the record in the database. The save method comes from the base entity class. Similarly, we can fetch the records by using the find method. There is a subtle difference here. The find method is a static method on the entity class. On the other hand, the save method was available on the entity instance. Ultimately, all the methods are available with the model class itself. This is the active record pattern. Now, there are some advantages and disadvantages of the active record pattern. The first advantage is that the active record pattern is actually quite simple to use. There is a direct correlation between an entity in type ORM and a table in the actual database. In other words, there is no ambiguity between the code and database. The second advantage is that active record pattern is rather intuitive. It is quite easy for a new developer to look at your project and understand the entire data model. This is a huge bonus when it comes to working in a large team. Sadly, active record pattern also has some disadvantages. The first disadvantage is that active record pattern does not follow the single responsibility principle. Basically, there is no separation of concern between the representation of the data model and the actual process of storing the data. We simply expose our data model in the form of CRUD operations. This leads to tight coupling between business logic and database logic. The second major disadvantage is that active record pattern does not solve the problem of object relational impedance mismatch. Rather than business objects, we are mostly exposing our data models and letting the client do the heavy lifting. So that was all about the active record pattern. Moving on, let's look at the data mapper pattern. The data mapper pattern is also known as the repository pattern. In this pattern, the query methods are kept in a separate class known as repositories. Basically, in the data mapper pattern, entities have no logic. The logic of dealing with the data is within the repository classes. To implement the data mapper pattern in type ORM, all we have to do is declare a normal entity class. There is no need to extend this class from any other class like we did with the active record pattern. 
Just declare the entity class with the usual type ORM decorators and we are done. The difference comes when we have to access data from the table. We first have to get access to the repository instance for that particular entity. For example, we call the get repository method of type ORM data source to obtain a repository instance of the flight entity. Once we have the instance, we can then use save, find and any other methods to work with the actual entity. Now this pattern has a few important advantages. The first advantage is that the data mapper pattern encourages a proper separation of concern between the data model and domain objects. While the entities in data mapper pattern are dumb classes, the actual work of storing happens within the repository class. This directly leads to a second advantage. Separation of concern means better flexibility between domain and database. The domain object of your application can be totally different from the database models. Both can evolve independently of each other without causing any maintenance issues. However, this flexibility also creates some disadvantages. The data mapper pattern is known to be tough to understand, especially when we are implementing custom repositories with complex queries. It is not as easy for new developers to join the team and understand the flow of data in your application. So what should you choose when working with type ORM? Active record or data mapper? Like many other things in software development, the choice of ORM pattern also depends on the specific use case. First consideration is the type of application we are trying to build. In case we want to build a quick prototype for concept validation, active record is a good choice. It gets the job done with minimal complexity. On the other hand, if it is a large scale production application with a gigantic data model, the data mapper pattern is a better choice. Second consideration is the business complexity. If the data model is complex with lots of business logic, always go with data mapper. Active record won't be flexible enough and you would end up with far too many DB interactions to cover up the complexity. For complex business logic, we have to follow proper object oriented design and split the responsibility of data handling. So that was all about the active record and data mapper pattern with a focus on type ORM. If this video was helpful, do like and share the video. Also, it would be great to share your views and comments on which pattern do you use and which one is better. So see you in the next video.